Hi friends, in today's edition of Knowledge Series, we'll be talking about two more risks. One is foreign exchange risk and the other is event risk. Let's start with foreign exchange risk. Now many investors invest into global assets from a diversification point of view. However, one must assess what's the foreign exchange risk on these kind of assets or these kind of investments. Now what is foreign exchange risk? It is nothing but the risk of the depreciation of the currency of the country in which the investments are going to be made. Let's take an example. For example, if a US investor invests into an Indian bond of about 6.5% per annum, let's say, and the depreciation of the rupee over a year is about 4%, it means that the real rate of return for the US investor is 2.5%. Now, how do you measure foreign exchange risk? In the short term, volume or the demand supply dynamics will determine the fluctuations in the exchange rate between the two countries. In the long term, interest rate parity will determine the change in the exchange rate between the two countries. Now what is interest rate parity? Interest rate parity is nothing but the differential of the risk-free rate between the home country and the foreign country. For example, the risk-free rate of US is 2.3% whereas the risk-free rate of India is 6.5%. Now this difference of 4.2% indicates that the rupee will depreciate against the dollar by 4.2% on an average. Now let's talk about event risk. Event risk is a risk in which an unforeseen event can negatively impact the markets and in turn your portfolio returns. Event risk is generally due to external factors such as natural calamities, war between countries, adverse news reports bankruptcy, scams, etc. While event risk is not measurable, its impact is usually short-term in nature and can be countered by ensuring longevity of your portfolio. For example, events like budget, elections will have a very short-term impact on the portfolio. However, the fundamental macroeconomic factors and corporate earnings will have a larger bearing on the portfolio returns. Now that we have understood all types of risks, it's very important to understand that we need to give equal importance to risk while we are chasing returns for a portfolio.